Hi and welcome to my channel. Today's video is part 3 of the Sherman Firefly VC build and I'm covering detail painting and chipping. I start by mixing the light green colour. I'm doing this with Winslow Newton white watercolour and I'm using the lighter colour, not the lightest but the one down from the lightest colour in the paint modulation set. I'm using watercolour because it's a model air paint so it will help thicken the paint and lighten it. I'm using the lighter green to add to the white to maintain the hue and the brightness of the colour I've got in the highlights. If I was to use a darker green it would give me more of a grey colour and it wouldn't look as natural as it would do using the lighter green. If you're mixing your own colours then I suggest using the lightest colour to make the highlights. If, it, if you can thicken it or you've got a colour that matches it, pre-mix and you could use that. I'll also be adding yellow to the paint to give it a bit of a lighter colour. I've made quite a lot of the mix, it's on a wet palette, but it's quite a lot of the paint but I'm going to use it for the chipping afterwards. I've used the yellow to lighten it because if I was to use white it would look like a more of a washed out colour. Also the yellow that I'm using is model colour not model air, so it's also got a bit more body to it and it just gives it a more lighter colour as opposed to a washed out colour. I'm also mixing three colours, they'll all be slightly different just to help with the chipping later as well and also with the highlighting you need to make sure that it, the colour stands out so you don't want it to be too bright or too dark just so it stands out but if you're doing it in different areas you need a different, slightly different tone. I add the highlight colour to all of the raised edges and also any raised detail like the vision slits, the meshes that cover the vision slits, the tops of the tool holders, basically just any detail that can be picked out um, around the edges of the filler caps and all of the vents I pick out the centres and also on the front of the tank where the bolts are for the transmission cover I pick that out, just anything that stands out really. Um, the gun lock, the gun traverse lock, the edges of the turret, um, not the turret, the edges of the hatches, so the, the very top edge, just anything that will stand out, it will just give the tank a bit more of a, of a, a colour, not a colour, a bit more of a contrast. I'll work around the entire little hole first methodically doing the bits I want to do them moving around as I move around the paint dries and you get a chance to see if it's the right sort of colour if not you can lighten it with another coat just to make sure that everything stands out nicely just need to take your time be patient work around the tank and just carry on doing it until you're happy once I've done the lower turret lower turret the lower hull I will move on to the turret I also find it's important to move the thing you're painting around your brush as opposed to moving your brush around what you're painting, if that makes any sense. So instead of trying to reach over to paint a detail, you move the vehicle or whatever it is you're painting so it's in, the, in a better position for painting that detail. It just makes it easier. I'm just finishing off the highlight here. I'm pretty happy with the result. Here are some stills of the results so you can see what it looks like and then we're going to move on to the turret. The turret is done in exactly the same way as the lower hull, just work your way around methodically catching the um, raised areas, the tops of the hatches and also sometimes I even do the, the ring of the cupola, just getting those little details it will help make the paintwork stand out a little bit, even the tow hooks. Um, just anything that stands up. The edges of the mantlet as well I do. I do a, a lighter colour on the top of it and a darker colour on the bottom. The edges of the of the add-on armour, just anything that stands out really, just to give it a bit more of a pop, a bit more of a contrast. It will it does look quite stark, but once you've added the extra details to it, uh, all the extra painting processes, it will dull it all down and it will look really really good, hopefully anyway. But it, it normally does. It's just one of those things where it's got to look stark because of the things you're going to do to it later that will make it dull down quite a lot. And basically just carry on doing it until you're happy with the end result. 
again working around it and as the paint dries you can see if you need to give it a lighter colour or a darker colour it needs a little bit of time to dry so you can actually see the final colour and here are some photos and close ups of the end result now we move on to the chipping I use the same colours to do the chipping that I used to do the highlights I'll have to do a few passes with them some of them won't be as noticeable as the others but then that also gives it more of a depth and makes it look heavier um, the initial chipping is to simulate scratches from trees branches things that have been put on the tank people walking on it just general wear and tear and then you go over it again with the darker rust oxide color which signifies where the chip has become deeper and the metal has gone rusty so you don't do this in all the chips but you do it in the majority of the centers of the green so that you get like a where it's rusted and then the paint's worn away and then if you're doing like a streak or like a long scratch you'd start the rust sort of in the center so you'd have a, a sort of scratch where its initial initial part is worn paint going into rust going into worn paint again or you can do it either way so you've got like rust at the front so really dug in and then moves out it's just up to you what you want to do but it's just good to keep things not the same and change the way you do it and not do all the chips exactly the same it just gives it the model more character again just work around the tank slowly starting off with the hull and then moving on to the turret just do it until you're you're happy with the result after i've done the sponge sorry after i've used a paintbrush which is the same brush i used for the highlights i also do a bit of work with a sponge just do some sponge chipping the same with the dark oxide color just do it first with a brush and then move on to a sponge starting from the center of the panels and working in where you get a lot of wear like I normally pay a lot of attention on a Sherman to the, the front mud guards um, and also the front glaciers plate. But the mud guards are a nice one if you do it on the either on the center, anywhere on the on the front part of the mud guard because it's they've been going through hedges and stuff in the bocage and getting scratched up quite a lot. So I think it's just nice to give a bit of character to it by doing the mud guards quite heavily. But again, just work through it slowly. Go back around it once or twice, moving the vehicle, not the brush so you move the tank around and you get in the right position to do the scratch and, and chips it's quite therapeutic to be quite honest the paints I've used for the the oxide chipping here uh, German dark brown which is Vallejo model color 70822 and I've also used dark rust which is um, not Vallejo it's Panzer Races 302 and I've also used some silver, uh, which I'll put on the wild beads, which is Vallejo model color 70997. I will list all the paints used in the description below, as well as any other products that I've used in this video. They're also on the screen. The reason I do the wild bead silver is because the actual metal in the wild itself didn't tend to corrode as easily, which is a technique that I learned by watching Night Shift. He's got a really good channel actually. I've picked up a lot of good things off him, but it just gives the tank a little bit of contrast. It's been quite a nice touch. Also, whilst I'm doing the wild beads, I put the silver colour in the inside of the headlamps. I haven't put the lenses on yet, I do that on purpose. So when you're painting them they don't they don't get dirty i could mask them off i just find it easier and also it means only getting the silver paint out once chipping is quite a time consuming process it takes a while to get to get quite good at it i'm not i don't think i'm very good at it to be honest i could use a lot more practice but i enjoy doing it it, it passes the time and it, it's quite relaxing very therapeutic but it's just one of those things that if you want to do it properly it takes a lot of time and i just move around the tank like i say methodically going back over if areas need a bit more then I put a bit more on and also I've still got the greens that I did the chipping with so if I've gone a bit too far I can let one of the chips the metal outside chips dry and then take some of it off with the green color 
or likewise I could get a piece of uh, an earbud and clean off clean it off with an earbud, wet earbud or just wet the brush and take some off just to tidy up a little bit but here I'm just finishing off the chipping and then we're going to move on to detail painting of the tools and here are some stills and some close-ups of the the work so far so moving on to the detail painting I'm going to be doing the tools the tracks and the spare track links I'm using Vallejo Panzer Aces dark rubber which is 70306 Panzer Aces no sorry model color silver which is 70997 and then Panzer Aces new wood which is 70311 and Panzer Aces old wood which is 70310 I could have used black but because I'm using dark rubber for the track links I just decided to use dark rubber which I'll mix with the silver to do the the iron colour for the tools and then I will give the wood handles a coat of the old wood and then put some new wood on top that won't be all I'll be doing some oils to them as well which I'll do in, in a later stage but just going over the tools painting the iron colour first and then painting the, the wood colour on top allowing so I'll go from one tool to the next with the one colour and then add the old wood while well the new wood go around the tools again and add the new wood allowing it and giving it a bit of time to dry just be careful not to get it onto the obviously onto the tank body because you spend a lot of time painting it it's you know it's a shame but you can always get it off with a bit of water or cotton wool bud but it's just better to be careful and try and do it well it really makes the tank pop it gives it a lot of contrast and a lot of interest because of obviously the tall colours a lot of people argue that they would have been painted green on the tank or left on the tank when it was painted green uh, same with German tools I've got no idea I just think it looks quite nice with them being being painted like tools I've also got to do the belt cut of the belts on but I haven't done that yet I'll do that in the next video well I won't do it on the next video I'll just do it I forgot to do it in this one so with the tools started or well nearly finished I decided to move on to the tracks I gave them a primer coat with Vallejo primer of dark black well black and then went over that once that was dry with dark rubber for the rubber internals and then after that I brush painted the metal cleats with dark olive which is Vallejo model color 71092 then once they were all dry I went over the metal parts on the front of the track with some of the silver and I'll be weathering those in the next video I don't know why I decided to do the tracks I just thought it'd be a nice change I've never really done anything to the tracks before I've always just painted them a rubbery colour without anything on the outside I just thought it'd be a bit of a nice nice change it did take a while but I think it's worth it it looked, it looked really good when I was done well I'm enjoying this build so far the only bit I didn't really enjoy was the suspension which never really like on a suit because yeah, I like it when it's done it's just the doing it is a little bit annoying it's it's a really hard easy shell kit I, I love these kits that is the only bear bug that I have about the suspension but then like I say I do like it when it's done anyway I hope you enjoyed the video I'll leave you with some stills of the vehicle so far and hopefully we'll come back next week to see the weathering video on I'll be doing dry mud on the lower hull well on the entire tank dry mud and dust effects thanks for watching If you've enjoyed the video and want to see more content like this then please leave a like subscribe leave a comment love to hear from you and just thanks for watching thank you very much goodbye